Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Noir is Noir. I'm Natasha, and in this episode, I'll be discussing It's Not All Downhill From Here. It's Not All Downhill From Here by Chad McGlynn is about a year in the life of Louisa, a woman in her 60s and her circle of friends. Moving through life, they experience diverse trials and tribulations, some of which revolves around them being at that particular stage in life. It immediately reminded me of Wait and Sex Hill, but while the women are also imperfect, they feel a bit more self-aware and somewhat settled in their lives. The friend group is also slightly larger, and the story is set in Pasadena, California, rather than Arizona. By this point, I've watched Wait and Sex Hill a million times, and also read the book. Yet most of Craig McMillan's books and movie projects have left me preferring the films, so I was a little apprehensive about starting this book. But I'm happy that I went against my instincts and gave the book a shot. Let me start by saying that as a fan of Wayne Sex Hill, Sex in the City, Set It Off, and other similar movies, and like TV shows, that I love movies and TV shows that center on a tight group of friends, especially a tight female group of friends. To be clear, not frenemies where there's like constant shadiness and infighting, but rather genuine solid friendships. It's cool when you have books and movies that follow one main character, when there's a lot of character development over time. With more lightweight stories, I enjoy the dynamic of the group comprised of different personalities. Not necessarily family, or not just family, where there's an obligation for them to be around and spend time together, though I did like the Soul Food series, but rather a group of friends who choose to be around each other and go through life together. You can have family members that you like to love to spend time with, but that dynamic seems to be like a little bit different compared to the family that you make for yourself. Your family is a group that you're born into and don't have a say in, like who else is a part of the group by default. But your friends can be a group of people that you gather along the way and choose to put together, choose to spend time with. That's not to say that one's better than the other, but because of how the two differ in coming together, the dynamic is often different. In the case of Louise and her friends, I really like their crew. I'm getting to a place in aging life where a lot of the TV shows and movies that I watched in the past, even watch now, resonate differently because I'm like at a similar age to the characters, or we're within like the same age range. Yet while this group consists of women who are like a lot older than me, there was still a lot that I related to and think most people would as well. The reason being that the characters are interesting and relatable, and they feel human. That made me think of it. Aside from maybe Frank and Grace in recent years and Golden Girls back in the 1980s, what other shows have focused on older women? I really like Something's Gotta Give and Cow and the Girls was a cool movie too. But despite their success, those projects feature older white women are like few and far between. But I didn't even think of a similar TV show or movie that focuses on older black women. If I'm not mistaken, I think I read somewhere that like, women are the primary buyers and readers of books. And I would assume that they also make up a sizable portion of moviegoers and TV watchers. Yet if you look at mainstream media, the stories about young women are very repetitive. But actresses have increasingly limited character options as they age, and that's if they don't simply disappear. Yet male actors can be leading men until like they don't just have just one foot in the grave, but look like they've spent some time in one. Their stories remain varied and interesting, and sometimes even regardless of what they look like, they're still presented as being sexy and attractive. But that tends to end with women at a certain age, or at least it's an expectation that it should. I like that this book pushes aside that notion. Sure, there are people who just let themselves go and lead boring lives, but that doesn't apply to every old person, and it also applies to some young people. I admire and make a note of both older men and women who take care of themselves and remain passionate about life. I would like to get old one day and welcome examples of other people who are living life as I might like to in the future. Now, Louisa and her friends weigh a bit more than they used to, and they're in different places in their lives, but I like that they're still fun and interesting. And also, for the most part, because they're older, they're also more financially secure. I read this book a bit after the holidays, and, you know, my grandmother passed away some years ago, around Thanksgiving. I found myself missing her throughout the year, but especially around the holidays. Reading this book in some ways, the characters are very different from my grandmother, but led to me thinking about her and really missing her. Like, especially knowing that she had what I refer to as, like, her old lady circle of friends, or, like, her old lady in. They would hang out and do their own things, spending time visiting each other's homes, which I thought was really sweet. So I enjoyed the friendship between Loretha and her circle of friends. 
But it was also nice to read about the sweet relationship between her and her husband of 20 plus years, Carl. Things are great in those areas of her life, but being imperfect, she's falling short in some other areas. One major issue is that she isn't taking proper care of her health, which is absolutely necessary to ensure that she can continue living a comfortable and healthy life. But I thought that just made her feel more real and relatable as a character. And she's also not a stereotypical bitty, right? Think of the Golden Hills and how these older ladies were still out here carrying on and having a good time. But mainstream American culture is very youth-driven. So often, men and women are treated as though they have an expiration date. But due to economic conditions, the cutoff age has been shifting a bit older, which I think is a good thing. In the past, it seems people were considered past their prime around, or like maybe after 30, like right around 30. Mostly because many were getting married, having kids, or otherwise settling down around that age. And I guess the implication was that like life stopped or became boring. But those life milestones are shifting to later in life as people are still figuring themselves out in their 30s and sometimes even into their 40s. And I think, like, you know, people are still doing life. The timeline for being attractive and having an active social life has expanded a bit. The book is interesting in that, number one, it focuses on older women. But here it is that you have this group of black women who aren't rich, but they're also, like, they're not poor either. Actually, for the most part, they're financially comfortable. And for the ones who are not, it's largely because of poor financial decisions on their part and being irresponsible with money, which also factors into the story. The characters aren't really stereotypical. Sure, they're black women, but they're not poor and struggling. And they also don't have like crazy dysfunctional relationships, like romantic relationships. Addiction is touched on, but not in the sense that any of them personally is like struggling with a crack addiction. You know, they don't have boyfriends or husbands that are in and out of jail. And I'm not saying that those things don't happen in real life, but it's all represented in the stories that are told about black people. Instead of a bunch of cliches, this story shies away from the stereotypical things that are presented as being the norm for black people. It's not just the same rehashing of stereotypes. The women are older, they are black, and they have imperfect lives. I don't believe in respectability politics, nor do I believe only perfect black people should have their stories told. But most black people are just minding their business and going about like living regular lives. Few people live at the extremes, so while we can certainly tell those stories, they need to be balanced with stories about regular black people. Their imperfections make them feel realistic, but also like that they're not living in dire circumstances, or like in, in the typical situations that we see so often represented in media about black people. You know, there are things here that I think you can find in each one of the characters that's relatable. Belita has her shortcomings, but is likable as is for the most part her circle of friends, though it did take me a minute to get the supporting character straight and tell them apart. But once the story progressed and you begin to get the backstory and current circumstances of each character, it became easier to differentiate between the characters. And at that point, I was also able to figure out my favorites versus the ones that I didn't quite like so much. In addition to her circle of friends, there's also a few members of her family that like factor into the story. Her mother was an absolutely comical character. Just a sweet older lady living it up in her golden years. I even liked her storyline of having to move to an assisted living place after becoming unable to live on her own. She comes to know that has an active life of her own. She has her own circle of friends as well as her own apartment, which allows her to be safe while having her independence. This woman is living as an 80-something-year-old woman with a more active and enjoyable life than a lot of people decades younger than her. Because Lorena and her friends are now in their 60s, their kids are grown, with some even having children of their own, so some of them are grandparents. Because these type of stories tend to skew younger, with characters in their 20s to like maybe 40s, part of their lives tends to revolve around having and raising minor children. Sure, they bring their own share of problems for the parents to deal with, but adult kids come up with a different set of problems. With minor children, issues typically revolve around school, activities, their first experiences, and them testing boundaries as they try to figure themselves out. But because the characters here are older, their adult children's issues are quite serious. Louisa's um, son is doing well and lives in Japan with his young family. Events take place where someone leaves and leaves his life, but it creates a situation where she's introduced to a young man who becomes like another son to her. She also has a daughter, Janessa, who struggles with alcoholism. Her daughter has a child of her own who's kind of floundering professionally, but, like, at least she's in a stable and loving relationship. The granddaughter is a little bit of a dirty backpacker who's still trying to find her way. 
And I like the adult granddaughter granddaughter relationship where Lolita champions and encourages her granddaughter as she's figuring things out. That relationship has a completely different type of energy in comparison to the relationship with her daughter. She tries to be supportive of Janessa, but she's less receptive to help, or at least help from Lolita. One of her friends is also dealing with a similar situation with an adult child who's struggling with drug addiction. It's one thing when your kids are young or even teens, and like you're trying to guide them to adulthood, but they want to do their own thing. Try to ensure that they focus on school while they might be more concerned with dating and socializing. Make it an effort to keep them on the straight and narrow away from drugs, negative influences, and other distractions that can derail their lives before they really get started. Imagine the added difficulty of your children being adults, but still wanting to guide them around the obstacles and distractions that are in their way. Yet because they're adults, you can offer them support, but there's only so much that you can do. Although Janessa is messing up, Louisa can't punish her or make her do right, or she certainly can't send her to a room, right? Her only option is to be supportive and try to help Janessa through this difficult time in her life. On a positive note, I love the relationship between Louisa and her husband, Carl. This is her third marriage, but it sounds like it's the best one. Her and her husband are both grown, not just with regards to their age as a number, but also their maturity, like within the relationship. They're not carrying on with the nonsense that they and others might have been entertaining in their youth. Being clear on what they both want and not playing any games allows the two of them to have a really beautiful relationship. And then they have a little dog with the cutest but most weirdly random name, BB King. The dog even becomes another key character in the story. In life, sometimes things might be going wrong one minute, only to fall apart in the next moment. Like, that's just how it is. As young people, we can sometimes take our health for granted, our lives really. We might assume that we have all the time in the world. We might assume the youth, vigor, energy, etc. of our 20s and 30s would automatically continue even as we get older. But the reality is just the factor of aging, staying healthy and fit will require effort. There are some things with regards to your health that are just beyond your control. This includes hereditary illnesses, injuries from accidents, etc. But there are also health issues that we can avoid or mitigate by developing healthy lifestyle habits in our youth. The hope is to do all that you can while you're young to safeguard against as many problems as possible later in life. There are health issues both directly and indirectly experienced by Lolita, Carl, and her friends. It varies from person to person, which is true in real life, as it depends on a person's activity level and like their commitment to health, as well as you know, the sort of things and whatnot. That commitment and discipline varies from person to person, and even within an individual based on stage of the, in their life. At this point in life, Belitha needs to lose some weight, as she's teetering on the brink of dealing with serious health issues as a result of her unhealthy lifestyle. It's largely caused by being inactive and having poor eating habits. This is something with which a lot of people struggle. Think of it like New Year's resolutions, where people tell themselves they're going to get healthy in the New Year. They plan to start eating healthy in January, but then decide it's okay in the meantime to eat, drink, and be merry because it's the holidays. Just a few more months of living unhealthy, and then they're going to make a big change. But after New Year's, they either unapologetically continue with the same old habits, or like, you know, they start out doing well, but then allow the plans to gradually fall by the wayside. Loretha falls into that camp, and she uses things happening in life as an excuse to not buckle down and get healthy. It's fine to have health goals, but as we see with Loretha, some people struggle because they try to get healthy for a specific moment. For example, they might focus on hitting a specific weight loss goal, rather than focusing on adopting long-term changes to their lifestyle. When Loretha decides to try eating more healthy, she skips dessert while out at dinner and resists eating candy. But she would later double back and eat not just what she said she wouldn't, but also in greater quantities. She also makes excuses and keeps delaying her commitment to getting serious about her health, like exercising and becoming active. And it's not just her health, but also other things in life. Lolita procrastinates in doing the things she wants, becoming the person she wants to be, and going after the things that she wants. I think most of us are guilty of this in some form. It's not just her, but her friends as well. Some of them are also struggling with their weight, but for others, they're procrastinating about improving other areas of their lives. I appreciated that realness. Reading the book, I found myself getting really frustrated with Lolita. She's a fictional character, but over the course of the story, like she became someone that I cared about. To read about her health declining and diabetes becoming a potential issue felt very real. 
Her unhealthy lifestyle and lack of activity will also be contributing to like her blood pressure and cholesterol levels also becoming an issue. With all of these problems looming, it was frustrating to read about her not taking action. She simply be watching what she eats, exercising, and just trying to be like otherwise healthy. But then she comes up with excuses as to why she can't start today or why it like needs to be put off until tomorrow. The way it all came together just felt very human and realistic. Overall, I like the way that everything came together. I enjoy the dynamic between Larika and her friends, in part because it's the same author who can wait until it's now. It felt like the characters were different, but like, in a sense, this is like the original crew, but just like 30 years later. I like these friendship stories where women lean on, encourage, and otherwise support each other. While they might have started out as high school friends because of their history, they're now just as much family as the ones they were like individually born into. This is a great story about their friendship, but it also touches on topics that are quite important in general, but especially within the black community. A major subject being health, as the main character has to do with diabetes. Her husband also has health issues, and they're slowing down but still want to live. It provides a very realistic discussion of someone struggling to make the changes that are now necessary to ensure they keep living and maintain their quality of life. There's also the discussion of mental health issues and addiction, two topics that are just beginning to be openly discussed. The reality is that people sometimes use these self-destructive habits as a way of self-medicating. Some of the characters are suffering from depression and other mental health issues that they might not even be willing to admit to themselves. Instead, they use alcohol and drugs to numb those feelings so they don't have to deal with them. This becomes an obstacle to them truly seeking out getting the help that they need. Macmillan's approach to these real and very relevant topics feels like like an opening to a discussion, rather than what might feel like a lecture in other hands. She manages to touch on the struggles faced by members of the Black community, really society in general. I appreciated that Macmillan was able to touch on these very serious topics in a way that was still entertaining and approachable. You might read this book and see something in the characters that makes you reflect on yourself, your friends, and your family. I know I did. Thanks for tuning in. Show notes are available on the Noir Squad website by the link in the episode description. If you enjoyed this episode and want more book recommendations, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and check out my book review.